The Victory Miracle Center presents The Believer's Way of Life with Dr. John Wiley. Broadcasting on the Gospel America Television Network worldwide. So join us for The Believer's Way of Life on the Gospel America Television Network. And now, let's join Dr. John Wiley. And we welcome you to be a part of our television audience. You are watching The Believer's Way of Life. Do not look to the bigness of your situation, your circumstances, nor your trouble. For if you look to those things, the enemy will use those things to defeat you. But rather look to the bigness of your God. And every step you take, and every step you make, can be and will be a miracle for you. Now today we're still talking about and we're going back now to the spirit of fear. We need to know how to come with this spirit. That is one of the major spirit that caused us not to fulfill the plan and the assignment and the mission of God for our life. Now, if you will, we're going to regress a little bit, do a little backdrop before we move forward because we want you to know exactly where we are, where we are where we are located and where we are going. So if you will, you turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis, 26th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 25. That's our recap. It says, And Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And their eyes of servant were digging a well. Then Abel went out to him from Gerar, with whose Hazar, one of his friends, and Phicol, his army commander. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me? Seeing that you hate me and have sent me away from you. They said, we saw, we saw, we saw. They, what did they see? They seen the blessing upon him. They seen the manifestation of the promise of God that began to manifest in his life. So they decided because we didn't like him at one time. We didn't want him with us at one time. But we decided now, since we see the blessing, the empowerment, the ability. We see the things that beginning to take place in his life and ministry. We want to be a part of that. See, and some people, some people will not be a part of you until they see something. Now let's keep going. Verse 28. They said, we saw that the Lord was certainly with you. We saw God on you. Why? Because God was Right here, the foundation of our prosperity. If people see God with us, they'll see the prosperity on our lives. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, carrying a curse with it, to befall the one who breaks it. Even between you and us, let us make a covenant with you. That you will do us no harm as much as we have not touched you, and have done this, have done to you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed and favored of God. Say it with me. Now I am blessed and favored by God. See, when you get to a certain place in your life, people will begin to see and understand that God is with you. Not only will they understand that they'll see the benefits as well as the prosperity that God is placing upon your life. And that is nothing more than the anointing of God, the blessings of God, the ability of God that giving you to become what you should already be. Praise God. And once you become a part of God's kingdom, the God gives you the ability to become. 
Keep going. He saved, verse 30. And he made them a formal dinner, and they ate and drank. They rose up early in the morning and took oath with a curse with one another. And I had sent them on their way, and they departed from him in peace. That same day, I, the servant, came and told him about the well they had dug, saying, We have found war. And the name they named, he named the well Shiva. Therefore, the name of the city is Bathsheba, well of oath to this day. The Bible says here that the reason why they were taking place. Is it because they seen the blessing upon him? I know you know this now. You go to scripture before then, and you find out that they told him to leave and go to somewhere else because he had got too powerful for them. But even before then, they was fighting with him along the way. Everywhere he went, there was a fight. Glory to God. See, sometimes you just have to roll up your seat and begin to fight. I ain't quitting till God bless me. I ain't quitting till the manifestation shows up. I'm not quitting till I get my healing. I'm not quitting till I get my breakthrough. I'm not quitting till I get my change. Because your change is coming. Because in the natural things, get, get this now, get this. In the natural thing, things in the natural always changes. Nothing stays the same. So they decided after they saw the blessing upon him, after they seen the manifestation that was taking place, they said, we're going to go down and connect with this. We're going to make a covenant with this. Because we understand if God bless him and God with him, if we connect with him, then that, that same blessing will be on, on me too. And see, we have to understand that some things you get some things that happen in your life. It's not because of what you know. It's because of who you know. Glory to God. Now we see here that they made a covenant. Promise with each other. And that promise was to become in a relationship. A relationship of a commitment. A relationship, relationship of loyalty. A relationship of faithfulness. A relationship will say that, hey, I got your back and you got mine. But we're going to make a covenant that we're not going to fight with each other. We're going to make a covenant that we're not going to quarrel with each other. We're not going to be against each other. We're going to be unified with each other because the fear of God now we know is upon you. And what we want to do now is connect with you because that spirit is drawing us to be able to do the things that you've done. Now it's something now begin to unfold in Genesis 46. Let's go there. Genesis 46. Verse 1. So Israel made his journey with all that he had and came to Bathsheba, a place hollowed by sacred, by sacred memories. And offer sacrifice to the God of his father. Now notice now something taking place there. They left the place where they were. Following the spirit of God. Say it with me. I have to be led. Mm -hmm. See if you're not being led of God. You're going on your own terms. You're going on your own commitment. You're going on your own covenant of promises. And therefore God have no responsibility to you but manifest the promises of the covenant that he made with you as you are becoming. Becoming what? I am becoming being led. I am becoming into the manhood. I am coming into the blessing. I am coming to the success that God has for me. But in order for me to become I have to follow God. I have to learn how to follow God. I have to sacrifice to follow God. I have to put down my fleshly ways. And I have to learn how to control my flesh, my emotions, my will. And I have to submit myself to the word of God. So the word of God now can lead me to the place where he wants me to be. Now it says here that verse 2. 
And God spoke to Israel in vision of the night, a dream. And said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. Verse 3. And he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. For I will there make you a great nation. Verse 4. And I will go down to Egypt with you. And I will also surely bring you, your people, Israel, out of Egypt again. And Jonah will put his hands on your eyes when they're about to close and dead. Now notice now. Before this time, the Bible say there was a great famine in the land. And he was getting ready, he was a Guerrero, and he was getting ready to go down into Egypt. The God appeared to him and said, stay put. Do not go down to the land of Egypt. I believe because he was not ready. Even though his journey was to be in Egypt, later he was not ready then. The Bible says God appeared to him and told him, do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land where you're at right now and I will bless you. I will bless you. I will bless your descendants. And everything you touch will prosper. The Bible says he sold in that land and received a hundred times more the same year. Say it with me. The same year. Now, in that same year, God blessed him. But after that, the blessing came. Jealousy rose up within the people that surrounded him. And they told him to get out of this land. For you are too mighty for We see the blessing. We see the power. We see the faith. We see the benefits of your God. But we can't accommodate that right now. We, 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 we don't know how to receive that. We, we don't have a revelation for that. We don't have an understanding for that. So what we want you to do is that if you just leave here, <laughs> glory, and go somewhere with your prosperity. Now the scripture says that he left and he went and he dug another way. Now, in the midst of your dig, and say with me, I got to dig deep. He began to dig because he had to dig deep. So every place he went, he had to dig again. He had to dig what? Deeper. So dig, digging deeper means I'm going farther in revelation. I'm going farther in understanding. I'm going farther in breakthrough because I got to dig a little deeper. And the Bible says that as he dug deeper, they still had quarrels. They still had fight. And, 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 and even in the midst that the, the local people that began to come there and dig began to fight against him. And he had to keep on fighting, keep on digging, keep on fighting, keep on digging until he came to a place of what? Peace, where room will be made for him. And see, that's where we at right now, that's where you at right now, that's where things are located right now, and then you have to dig, you have to fight until the fight ceases. Not the fight ceases in you, but the fight ceases in the people around you, the circumstances around you, the enemy that tried to hold you. Because if you don't stay fighting until it ceases, you can't win the battle. You won't overcome the enemy. And the Bible says that here, Something is taking place. Now he gets to this place right here. So Israel made a journey for 46. I mean chapter 46 once again. Israel made a journey with all that it had, came to Bashiv a place and hallowed sacred memories. And offered sacrifices to God and Father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision in the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. 
He said, here I am. And he said unto him, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid. Do not let fear come upon you now to stop you. Do not let fear now grip your heart. Do not let fear paralyze you, brother, because I'm telling you, fear paralyzes you. Fear numbs you. Fear grips you to the point where you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. You cannot accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. And God, the first thing God did when he came on the scene with him, he said, do not be afraid because fear has torment. And God said, I warn you now, I want you to be afraid. Now, what I want you to do now is that since I told you before not to go down to Egypt, now I want you to go down to Egypt. Glory. Why? Because before you didn't have the blessing, you couldn't go. Before you didn't have the authority, you couldn't go. Before you didn't have the manifestation, you couldn't go back and get those who you left behind. You can only go back and get those who you left behind when you are able to go back and lead them out because guess what? You cannot take nobody nowhere you have not been. You cannot manifest that which is not a part of you. He said now since this blessing, my faith, my presence, is with you. I want you now to go back or go back down into Egypt where you were trying to go before, but you weren't ready to go before, but you're ready to now because I am with you and the manifestation that I promise you, people can see. Say manifest. See, people will not follow you if you don't show them something to follow. They got to see now, since it changes there and the time changes, let's go now to Deuteronomy. First chapter. Deuteronomy 1, verse 21. Since now he's able to go back down to Egypt, God tells him to. Verse 21. Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. He said, now since this blessing is upon you, now the land is set before you. Go up and possess it. As the Lord, the God of your fathers, has said to you, Fear not, neither be dismayed. Once again, God now saying, Go back to Egypt. Now I'm sending you to Egypt because I want you to possess the land in Egypt. Glory to God. The Bible declares, Lord, that the heathen shall be our what? Inheritance. But you cannot be afraid. You have to know how to be able to demolish of dismiss, of cancel, or defeat the spirit of fear. He said, go up now, go down to Egypt, possess the land. Not just fit in, not just take a piece, not just take a, 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 a anchor, but take the whole land. He said, I want you to go up there and I want you to possess it. Possess it means to take ownership. Hmm. See, it's mine. See, where God is trying to get you to go and where he's carrying you is yours. Nobody have your blessing. Can't nobody get your blessing. Your blessing is stored up in heaven for you. Your land is set for you. If anybody have your land, you have the right to go up and possess it. But you cannot possess it until the timing is right. 
Some things that you have to conquer in your life before you can go up there and seize the land that God promised. Keep going. He says, Did you all come near to me and say, Let us send men before us that they may search out the land for us and bring us word again by the way we should go up and the cities in which we shall come. The thing pleased me well. And I look, took 12 men of you, one of each tribe. Now, don't you see something going on? Now, notice now, when they got the word to go and take possession, the Bible said, count the cause. They didn't just go up there. No, they had to know who they was dealing with. They were, had to know what was in the land. They wanted to know how to, what, the, what kind of harbor was in the land. Glory to God. They had to know what the kind of enemy they were dealing with. We ain't even know how big the enemy was and how many they were. Glory to God. And they had to know did they have enough means within themselves to take possession. Even though God told them to go up, they still had to qualify themselves. Glory to God. Even though God gave them the told them to go up, they had to qualify themselves. How did they have to qualify? They had to qualify their belief system. They had to qualify their faith. They had to qualify their, uh, their fighting pattern. They had to qualify themselves to fight against the enemy because once they step out in the battle, there was no turning back. There was no turning around. There was turning out going backward. They had to go in and possess the whole land. Keep going. they turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eskar and spied it out. Praise you, Jesus. I got to spy out the land. And they took up the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land which the Lord our God gives us. Now notice now, they went up there they scouted the land out. They, they looked for the fruit in the land. And they said, they came back with a report that was pleasing. The land is good. The fruit is awesome. And God has given it to us. Now notice now, at this point, they never said anything about the enemy. They never said anything about their giants in the land. Why? Because it don't matter. Why does it not matter? Because God said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. God said, go up and take it by faith. God said, go out and do what you do because I'm going to be with you along the way. When you go out, you won't go by yourself. I will go with you. It don't matter how big, how big the enemies are in that land. Because we serve a big God. And the God we serve cannot be defeated. The God we serve cannot be ran off. The God we serve cannot be turned down. The God we serve will make a way for us to defeat our enemy no matter what we're facing and what we're doing. Keep going. <clears throat> he said, Yet, you will not go up, but rebel against the command of the Lord your God. He said, even though you've seen the fruits here, and you still won't go up. Why won't I go up? The Bible says because they did what? Rebel. Why did they rebel? rebel? They got afraid. God told them in the very beginning, do not fear. But yet, they went to spot the land, they got all the fruits of the land, and they seen that the land was good, and yet, 
they rebelled against God. Rebel means you refuse to follow God's lead. To rebel means to disobey. Even though you know the blessing is there, even though you know what God promised, you will not do what God said. Glory. Dangerous place to be in. He said, you were pe peevish and discontented in your tents and said, the Lord hate us. He brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy. Do what they say. God now has carried me on a assignment to die. We never gonna fulfill the mission that God planned for because He brought us out of Egypt into the land of the Amorites to destroy us. Because these Amorites are going to destroy us. Glory, glory, God. What a confession to make when God told you, I'm going to be with you, go up and possess the land. And they got afraid. To what are we going up? They say. Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, the people are bigger and tall, and we are. The cities are great and fortified to help. Look what he's saying right there. He said, our brothers, by their word, make our heart feel, melt. That's why you can't listen to everybody. They listen to the wrong counsel. They listen to the wrong report. They listen to the wrong word. They said our brothers. And see, a lot of times, if what your brother, the one that closest to you, try to talk you out of what God told you to do. He said, our brother had made us, our heart melt to the point where we are discontent and afraid to do what God said to you. See, some people will put fear in you. The wrong fear in you. Not the fear of God, but the wrong fear in you. You have to know who to listen to. When, you, when you're trying to grow up and fulfill the mandate of God and break the spirit of fear, you cannot be listening to people who speak fear. You cannot be listening to situations that, can, that speak fear. You cannot put yourself around circumstances that speak fear. You have to keep yourself in faith. The Bible says, those who mind are stayed on him, that he'll keep them in perfect peace. So you have to learn how to be peaceful when everything else is not. Keep going. He says, The cities are great and fortified to help. And more, we have seen the giant like sons of Anak. And we have seen the giant like sons. There are even giants in the land. Now they get a grasshopper complex. We ain't big like they are. We small. We don't have the strength like them. They big. Don't you know that Bible say if there's anything too great for our God, we can accomplish anything. We can do anything that God tells us to do in the season and in the season. And the calling that he chose to do, if we would just take courage and do what God said to do. Fear terrorizes you. Quit looking at the circumstance. They looked at the circumstances too long. Quit looking at the obstacle. If you look at the obstacle too long, you will see yourself getting smaller than the obstacle when you should see yourself bigger than what the problem is. And a lot of us are to the point where we're inside the problem. In order to, in order to solve the problem, you got to get out of the problem, up over the problem, and look down on the problem so you can see the solution. But God never told you to run from the problem. He told you to go up and possess it. 
So if you're going to possess it, you got to get the fear thing out of your life. You cannot be scared. The enemy wants you to be afraid. Because if he, if he knows that you're afraid, you will not challenge him to do what God said to do. And a lot of us not challenging the enemy. We're just riding along. You heard the song say, let the devil ride. We just let him ride along. Verse 29. Then I said to you, dread not. Neither be afraid of them. He once again, he said, dread not and don't be afraid of these giants that look like giants. You a giant too. Where you a giant at? You might not be a giant in stature, but you're a giant in faith. You're a giant in heart if you just learn to believe God. You can do things the giant can't do if you just learn to obey God and not be afraid. See, if you if you can do it by yourself, you wouldn't need God. If you can come it by yourself, you wouldn't need faith. Faith is the means that God gave us to empower us to do what we couldn't do on our own. Faith is the supernatural presence and power of God to manifest the things that you need. Glory to God. So let's have faith. Hey, say, verse 30. The Lord your God, who goes before you, he will fight for you just as he did in Egypt. Before your eyes. He said, wait a minute. Don't think you're going by yourself. He said, God's going to go before you. When you get there, God's going to already pave the way for you. The only thing you have to do is walk in victory. But in order for to do that, you got to show up. And a lot of us are not showing up to the battle. You got to show up so God can show out. Once again, you got to show up so God can show out. The Bible said that Jesus made an open display of the enemy. God wants you to show up so he can make an open display of the devil that trying to oppose you. He said he'll prepare a table for you right in the presence of your enemy. That means he's going to set the table for you and it's going to be good right there. But you got to go and get at the table. You can't let fear stop you. Fear is traumatized. Fear of rejection. You can't let these things stop you. You can't let fear fail. When I fail at that one time, let, well, try it again. Glory to God. Let's keep on trying it until we until we get the breakthrough. Because the reason why you ain't manifest the first time because you gave up. Say it with me. I can't quit. I can't give up. I can't back down. I can't turn it around. I got to face my enemy, my adversary, face to face. And I got to stand there. But when you've done all the stand, what do you do? Stand. When I've done all I can do, what do I do? Stand. Don't give up no ground. Don't give up no territory. Don't bag up. Don't compromise. Stand there. Quit yourself. Gird yourself. Square your shoulder back. Lift your head up. Plant your feet. And determine in yourself that I refuse to be moved. Fear will not torment me. Fear will not call me to miss my blessing. Fear will not call me to miss the promise of God. I shall fulfill my destiny. Glory. The Bible says here. That in the wilderness, verse 31. Well, you have seen how the Lord your God bore you as a man carried his son and all the way that you went until you came to this place. He said, God carried you. God been carrying you all the way. He been carrying you every step you made until you came to this place. Now, since you at this place, what place? This place now where the situations and such looking things are bigger than what I seem to be bigger, seem to be bigger, seem to be bigger than what I am. But see, those situations and circumstances are not bigger than your faith. 
Remember what I said. Do not look to the bigness of your circumstance, your problem, your situation. If you, you, if you look to those things, if you focus your mind or your spirit or yourself on those things, if you set your mind on those things, the enemy will use those things to defeat you. You can't look at the situation. You can't look at the circumstances. You can't look at the problem. You have to decide to set yourself. Hmm. I already know what's coming in. I already know what's coming against me. I already know I'm going to have problems. I already know I'm going to have a situation. I already know that there's going to be things that are bigger than me. But see, it ain't bigger than your God in you. The thing might be bigger than you in the natural, but it's not bigger than you in the spiritual. It might be acting about shock. It might, that's for me. It might be at a place where it got you feeling like you're inferior to the situation. But I want you not to look at the situation, but to look at God. And you see that God is inferior to no man. God is not inferior to no situation. God is not inferior to no circumstance. God, the Bible says, if there's anything too hard for God. If there's not anything too hard for God, believer, there's nothing too hard for me. I can do what God says I can do. I can fulfill the assignment God so for me to fulfill. I can accomplish what God said I can accomplish. And I can fulfill my destiny in life. I can and I will. Stop telling yourself you can't and start telling yourself you will. Stop telling yourself you can't afford it and say you can't afford it. Why can't I afford it? Because God said I could. Now he says, yet, Verse 32. In spite of this word, you still do not believe. In spite of this word, you did not believe. Trust, rely on, and remain steadfast to the Lord your God. He said, even in the midst of this, God said, I talked to him blue in the head. Talk to my eye became bloodshot red. And yet you still would not believe, you still would not trust, you still would not rely on me, you still would not remain in that word. What word? Go up and possess it. Possess what? Possess the land. Why? I'm gonna be with you. The only thing you gotta do is come with me. Follow me because I'm going to go before you. And when you when I go before you, the battle is not yours. It belongs to me. All I need for you to do is follow me. But the Bible says they still do not believe. They still do not trust. They still do not remain steadfast. Wow. They let fear bag them up. They compromise the word of God. If you compromise the word of God, you'll be compromising all your life. If you sell it, you'll be selling for the rest of your life. Why? Because you will never break the power in there over your life. You got to get to your point where you set your mind and decide whether hell or high water, no matter what take place, I ain't moving, I ain't changing, I ain't backing up, I ain't turning around. I'm going to stay face to face with my enemy, my adversary, my situation, my condition, my problem, and I'm going to decree and declare that my God is a miracle working God and I want to do what he said for me to do. Verse 33. Glory to God. Who went in the way before you to search out a place to pitch your tent. The Bible said God went before you so that he can find a place for you so you can make your home. Don't be trying to go do it yourself. Let God do what he said he was going to do. And the only thing you have to do is follow. Say with me. I'm going to follow the leading of God. Why? I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know where I'm supposed to put my tent. I don't know what city I belong in when, it, when, it, when it's so vast all around me. But I, what I do know how to do, I know how to follow 
the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And as long as I follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, wherever I end up at, God led me there. And the Bible says God went before them and found the place for them to pitch their tent. He found the place for them to temporarily be so that he, they can accomplish all that he wanted to accomplish in that land. But you cannot let fear stop you. You cannot let fear overshadow you. You can't let fear torment you to the point where you cannot follow God. He said, when? Verse 33 again. Who went in a way before you to search out a place to pitch your tent. By night, he led by fire. To show you by what way you should go. And in a cloud by day. This is what he said now. He said, in the nighttime, I'm sending fire to lead you because it light up your way. And the day I'm sending you cloud, it represent rain because that cloud will lead you to your harvest. That cloud will lead you to your destination. Glory to God. Then the fire is sent to burn out everything that hinders you. That holds you. Mm -hmm. That disappoints you. God said, do I not make my ministers of flame and fire? That fire on the inside of you. That fire will ignite your faith. Glory to God. That fire will excite you. That fire will cause you to be confident. But that cloud will cause you to know the way. Glory, keep going. It says, And the Lord heard your words and was angered and he swore. What did he swear? None of these men of this evil generation shall see that good land which I swore to give to their father. Because they rebelled, because they was in fear, because they rejected God's word, because they were more confident that the situation was powerful, more powerful than them. They were more confident that the giants in the land and to defeat them. They refused to they refused to obey God. So God got mad with them and he said, None shall enter into the land that I promised. What land did God promise you? The land of redemption. All that he has. All that he is. If you allow fear to dominate you, you will miss God. You will miss God bless. You will miss God faith. You will miss God opportunity. You will miss God promises for your life. And you will not be able to come into the fullness of God and you'll die in the land or not enough. Verse 36. Except Joshua. Of course, Ankele, Kele, Caleb, the son of June. He shall see it. Say it with me. Faith caused me to see. Fear put out my eye. I can't see. I can't discern because of, because of bad and good and good and evil. I can't see. Fear called me not to see. Fear called me to misunderstand. Fear called me to misrepresent. Fear called me to lose revelation. Fear called me not to receive revelation. Fear called me to leave word the word of God. Fear called me to back off the word of God. Fear called me not to put pressure on myself using my faith to cause me to come into my promise. And fear will cause you to lose what God promised you. So you have to decide, I'm not letting fear dominate me. I'm not letting fear hold me down. 
I'm not letting fear capture me. I'm not letting fear put me in bondage. I'm, a, I'm moving out of fear into faith because anytime you in faith, fear can't live. And when you in fear, faith can't live. God wants you to be absent of doubt. He wants you to be so convinced about where you're going and about what he said. Nothing moves you off of that. And I don't care what comes up with situation, circumstance, problem, situation. It doesn't matter. Paul said it this way. No death, peril, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Nothing shall be able to separate me from the word that God has gave me. Nothing shall be able to separate me from the promise of God. Nothing shall be able to separate me from accomplishing what God said for me to accomplish. Nothing shall be able to separate me, nothing shall be able to separate me from the wealthy, rich place that God has promised me. And if you allow that to take place, it's your fault. It's not God's fault. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 4th chapter. Deuteronomy 4th chapter. Start at verse 1. It says, Now listen and give heed, O Israel, to the statutes and ordinances which I teach you, and do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord, the God of your father, give you. He said, now, I want to give you some instruction. Now, I want to teach you. Church, I want to teach you something. That you may go in and possess the land that God gives you. But in order to go in and possess that land, I got to be taught how to. I got to have his instructions how to. Because this enemy is real. The enemy you fight with is real. The enemy you fight against is real. And if you don't know how to defeat him, he's going to defeat you. Glory to God. And if he can defeat you, he'll put you in bondage. And he'll turn you every way he wants to turn you. And nothing you can do about it. And ain't nothing God can do about it until you come into that revelation of how to defeat him. You shall not add to the word, verse 2. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish it. So you shouldn't add to it and don't take it away. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away from it. But keep it just like it is. That you may keep the commandment of the Lord your God which I command you. Verse 3. Your eyes still see what the Lord did because Baal poured. He said, your eyes still see what the Lord did because of Baal and Paul. For all the men who followed Baal and Paul, the Lord your God had destroyed from among you. But you who clung fast to the Lord, your God, are alive. Every one of you this day. Now I went to that word, Baal Paul. It means the Lord of the wide open. It means the Lord of the wide open. He said, did not your eyes see what happened to the wide open people that followed their poor? Did not your eyes see the wide opening that the Bible declared many go in the wide way but you'll find a traveling every now and then they follow the narrow way. He said why is the minute of destruction? But what do vapor mean? I went to Numbers 25 and 3. You can go there on your time and research it. Where the children of Israel took part in sexual rights with the Moabites and worshiped the local God. Idols. 
in the Bible, God began to speak to me. He said a lot of us were snared by the words of our mouth. We made commitments with our mouth that we shall never or should never have committed to. Because you were in that season at one time. Your heart was there at one time in what you were doing. Your desire was there at one time in what you were doing. But now your heart is not there. Your heart is not there in and on. Your spirit have changed. The reason why this, your spirit have can change is because now God now is moving upon you and you he have brought a bringing the spirit of freedom upon you where you can now come and free yourself or be free to serve him by not worshiping idols. A lot of us have got ourselves into sexual vices, situation and problems. By the commitment of our word, because at first we started off doing that, but we find out later on that is not what we want. But now you are in bondage. Now you can't get free. Now the enemy have a grip on you, have a hold on you, and it's a power grip. Now even though God wants you free, even though you want to be free, you don't know how to get free. But I want you to understand something. There's coming... A time, quickly, say quickly. It's going to come upon me quickly. That the Lord is going to open a wide door for you to free yourself. Now, I want you to be open to this door. I want you to be watchful in this door. Because when this door opens, you're going to have a wide door, but the door is not going to last long. You're going to have to free yourself quickly, say quickly. And if you do not be afraid, and if you walk through this door, God is going to set you free. You're going to be free where you never have to go back through that again unless you choose to. How do I get free? Well, first of all, you have to be looking and watching for this door. You have to be waiting for the opportunity of this door to come forth. God is going to release you. You need to be expecting it. You need to be looking for it. Glory to God. And you need to be actively waiting for it. Because when this door open. You got to be ready to seize the opportunity to step through this door so that you can be free. Because the Lord is getting ready to open a wide door for you that you don't have to fight your way through. The only thing you got to do is run your way out of it. Praise He's going to make it to the point where you can run your way out of it so you can escape the clutch. You can escape the grip of the enemy over your life. And the Bible says here, <laughs> it says, verse 3 again, your eyes still see what the Lord did because of their poor. For all the men who followed the bell of Pearl, Paul, the Lord your God had destroyed among you. Remember that now. If you're going that wide way, that not that narrow way, if not that travel every now and then, you're going along with everybody else. God gonna destroy. There's some things getting ready to come up on the church. I like to say, prepare yourself. Because the enemy is attacking. And it's going to get great. Uh, verse 4. But you who clung fast to the Lord your God, you who clung fast to the Lord your God are alive. Every one of you this day. The Bible says that God had mercy on us. 
because we were living and worshiping idols, because we were having ourselves in sexual vices. He said, but you still decided to cling to the Lord your God. He said, for this very reason, this reason only, that you are alive today. Verse 5. Glory to God. He says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinance, as the your Lord your God commanded me, that you should do them in the land which you are entering to possess. He said, these promises now, these commands that I'm giving you now, I'm giving you these commands so that when you go into the land and possess it, you will know how to act. You will know how to operate. You will know what to do. Because if you go in doing the things you're doing now in the world, and if you have sexual vices, and if you are worshiping idols, God will cut you out of the land. You will lose what God has promised for you to have. Say with me, I can't go back. I won't go back. I will not go back to where I used to be. The only choice for me is to go forward. And I have to go forward with a new mind. I have to go forward with a new attitude. I have to go forward with a new passion. I have to go forward with a new expression. I have to go forward with a change in my heart, a step, a, a dance in my feet. I have to go forward with a new walk. I can't be playing with the enemy. I got to let him know from the very beginning, enough is enough the first time. When he get out of place, you put him in line the first time. You don't just play with sin. You cut it off. Why? I'm not going to miss what God has for me. I'm going to do everything that God has for me. I'm going to stay in the land that God promised me to stay in. So keep them and do them so that is your wisdom and your understanding inside of people. He said, you keep them and do them so that that be your wisdom and understanding inside of people. So believer, this is your opportunity. For those who are not saved, who have not given their life to Christ, Christ, this is your opportunity. If you have not given God your life, I won't wait till tomorrow. I do what God called me to do today. Because tomorrow is not promised, only today. And so if that's you, I didn't want, I need for you right now to confess after me while I lead you to Christ. Say these words after me. Put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, I thank you that I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you have raised Jesus from the dead and I am saved. So therefore I give back everything Satan has tried to give to me. I give back pain. I give back sickness. I give that misunderstanding. I give back everything that the enemy has planned for me. I even give back my wicked mind. I give back my wicked spirit. I give back my wicked action so that I may follow God. And if you confess that prayer, look on the information, email, text, write a letter, whatever. Let God, let us know what God did for you so that we can instruct you and give you some more information of what to do. And believe it, this is your time. If you want to be free today, stand up on your feet, wherever you are. Put your hand on your heart. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Satan, I bind you. Spirit of fear, I bind you. I loose you for your assignment over that believer's life. And I command them to walk in the promise and the promise of God. And I command them to be free in every part of their life from the spirit of fear rejection and all the plan of the enemy in Jesus name thank you so much for watching this program on the gospel America channel you can download our app from the app store or from Google Play and again thanks for watching on the gospel America channel